Hey folks, this is Vincent Natalie with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and welcome to episode one of the DGA podcast. I am your host, Vince, and my co-host, you all know her, Idly. So, we have no idea how this is going to go. This is super casual. We've never done a podcast before, ever, ever, ever. So, uh, bear with us as we work out the kinks. Hopefully you have fun. Uh, let's get right on to it. So, I think the format that we've decided on, we're going to do a top five list every week. We're going to try and do a podcast every week, depending on how this goes. And then following the top five, we'll get in some news and some game deals, uh, possibly some community stuff. Um, and then we'll get into the Patreon stuff. So hang in there. So the top five for this week, um, I believe the subject was top five games that we wish had co-op but didn't. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, through the genius of technology... I found a way to get a soundboard to work. So I have painstakingly searched the internet for all sorts of cool sound effects. And by uh, painstakingly, I meant search the YouTube royalty free for all of five minutes <laughs> to try and find sound effects. Um, so if you're expecting a number five, you're not going to find that here. Uh, instead, uh, number five... <laughs> Oh, it's 20 seconds long. I guess that's a little excessive. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, royalty-free. It, it sounds like a guy. That is disgusting. <laughs> what? Is this? It's great. It's family it is family-friendly. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Shh, dog. Okay. So, number five. My number five game that I wish had co-op but didn't. Skyrim. So, what is Skyrim and why do I think it should have co-op? Well, first of all, Skyrim is this open-worldsy RPG, beautiful, absolutely beautiful game to look at. Um, you can do all sorts of different things in it. Um, you can choose different races. Um, there's no classes, per se. Like, you don't choose warrior in the beginning or choose mage in the beginning. But you can custom choose which direction that your character wants to go in. So, if you want to be this magic wielding archer you can um if you want to be this warrior but for some reason can raise skeletons from the dead you know through necromancy you can do that too and it just boggles my mind that skyrim wasn't multiplayer or co-op and yes before you guys start going yeah but there's the elder scrolls online you can do that well keep in mind that the elder scrolls online was not a thing when skyrim was first released so, to me, like, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense that, you know, this game doesn't have co-op. I, I, I just think that for a, a game of this scale, where you're, there's a huge open world, you can, you can get resources, you can mine, you can chop down trees, you can, uh, you know, get your own house in this game, you can start a family. Um, why you couldn't have people come into your world and help you out and do various things and do quests is beyond me. Now, I believe you've played this game before? I love this game, and I think a co-op uh, within this game would have been fantastic. I'm so disappointed it didn't have it, because we could have played together. We could have had a family or something. Uh, you know? Yay. <laughs> Adopting 6,000 children and just mm -hmm. stuffing them into our home. Yeah. I could be the lumberjack, you know, chopping wood and just selling it, and, and you There's can take a care of the kids. <laughs> wait, 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 back up, back up, back up. You know, I'm for all that equality and all that, but yeah. I ain't staying home with 6,000 kids. <laughs> no, that, that's what your, that's what your Thane is for, isn't it? You can you just stick your Thane home with the kid. You know, that, that woman that you yeah, get in the oh, beginning yeah, of the game, right. just stick well, them home with the both. Thane. It's fine. <laughs> She'll stick around. Things. She'll well, watch them. Yeah. Enemies. Yeah. Fine. Slay dragons <laughs> while your Thane stays home with the kids. It's amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> What character do you typically play in the game like this? Are you the um, brute force warrior type, or do you like sneaky, sneaky stuff? I was the reptile. The I reptile think. race. And the, uh, the I tried the the furry, the furries. One of the furries, the cats. <laughs> the furries. Cat. Yeah, it's that's yeah, it's the it's that's the official race name, the furries. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was also like um, a mage type too, mostly. Um, I found 
I, I was a melee and I did the range, you know, for the most part, but then I found um, some spells and I was just all for that. I, I just kept hunting spells and mm. that was pretty fun. I, I, I Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that if I had a co-wielding, uh, like a co-partner just wielding magic spells with me, it would have been fun. That would have been cool. Like one person <laughs> does the ice spells, one person does the fire spells, one does the electricity spells. <laughs> you could have all sorts of elemental mages doing all sorts of cool things. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, I typically play either a mage, but more so I do the thief. Um, I, I like, um, in this game, there's a thieves guild. And I'm a kleptomaniac in this kind of game. I, I like to steal stuff because I don't do it in real life. Like, I just like being the bad guy sometimes. It's like playing mm -hmm. Mass Effect or Knights of the Republic, which are other yeah. RPGs. Like, you know, I, I typically play the good guys, but then I go back and replay it as the bad guys just to see what kind of bad things I can do. Well, mm -hmm. in this game, I, I'm always a kleptomaniac. I like going around just stealing everything. In fact, you can go into this one shop, not in Stormwind, that's World of Warcraft, I'm thinking, uh, what is it, uh, White Run or something? Uh, the main town. Anyway, you can go into Bellathor's shop or whatever his name is, and then you could put a bowl on his head. And he's just standing there with his bowl on his head, and you can go around stealing stuff. And if you're part of the Thieves Guild, you can actually get rid of it. Because you can't sell mm -hmm. items that you've stolen to a regular vendor. You have to go to a thief, uh, Thieves Guild and pawn it off that way. And you can make mm -hmm. a lot of money doing that. So, and I, I like the whole sneaky, sneaky... The bow and arrow in this game is very satisfying. Um, I just, I, I, for whatever reason, I really enjoy the bow and arrow. Um, it's just really satisfying to sneak around and then do 3x sneak damage, which is like extra damage for, you know, catching them unawares. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I like I like that particular play style. I didn't like to steal very much only because I didn't, I, I wanted to keep the story and the characters intact. Mm. And I found that, like, the more you stole, um... It seemed like the more that they would run off track, like they mm. could probably starve to death or they could like steal from someone else That's or something because they didn't have the item that they were supposed to have. So I don't like doing that. It was, it kind of made me sad. <laughs> no, I, I understand that. I mean, like you, you're getting more into the lore and to how mm -hmm. the characters feel. I don't think Skyrim really got into that. Like, I know that if you broke rules in a town, the guards would attack you on site. But, yeah. like, if you waited three days and came back to the town, they were like, oh, yeah, come on in. It's no problem. You committed murder three days ago, but it's fine. No problem. It's, it's okay. There was one incident where um, I guess I was – I took too long in getting to my uh, waypoint on a map. And when I finally got there, my character – um, like my part, my partner or something, my NPC partner actually died, and I was unable to finish that quest. I was so mad, and that's when I kind of went, "All right, I'm never stealing, I'm never murdering <laughs> anyone. That's it. I'm done because I want to finish all the quests." Well, so, that's, like, that's tough. That's <laughs> tough in Skyrim, at least vanilla Skyrim, because there are NPCs that will bug out and quest lines that will bug out, oh, and there's I nothing know. you have to enable a console to get them back on mm -hmm. track. It, it's typical. Of a huge yeah. game like this, but I, it's beautiful to look at. I I I would come back, and I think co-op is absolutely you know something that should be in this game. Uh, I know mm -hmm. again online Skyrim online or uh, Elder Scrolls online. Yes, I I know that. But mm -hmm. before online, I think Skyrim would have benefited from a co-op or multiplayer mode. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> what was your number five? Did you have mine? A number th was Dark Deception. Dark Deception. Now, pray tell, what is Dark Deception? That is a horror Pac-Man uh, game, basically. Ah. That's what it is. If we had co-op in this, we can probably, like, my partner would be Mrs. Pac-Man, and we can just both be getting crystals, you know, avoiding ghosts, and, yeah, and probably scare each other half to death. I don't know, but it, it would be super fun if this had co-op. I, I like the idea. I, I, I Like, part of me is thinking that's a cool idea because, um, like, you could complete the levels better or quicker. At the same time, though, there would have to be some kind of mechanic where, like, if one player got caught, it wouldn't ruin the playthrough for both. Because I, I'm imagining one really good player and one really bad player, and the one really bad player constantly getting caught, and then mm -hmm. you both fail. 
So if there was a way, like, in, you know, in Left 4 Dead where one player dies, it doesn't end the game. It's just the other players rescue them later on in the level. Mm. So if there was some kind of mechanic like that in this game. So the where... rescuing would be kind of cool, but um, I would probably like it more if there was just a respawn. You know, like, mm-hmm. wait 20, 30 seconds for a respawn. Or mm. if the person, the remaining player just has to finish it. Themselves, okay, so it's know? it's a, an elimination thing where the last player, st- the you know, you can keep playing, but if all players die, then it's over. But yeah. the only down, the only thing that sucks about that is the downtime. In in board games that we play, um, mm-hmm. we give at least me personally, I give a lot of guff to games, board games that um, other players have to sit and wait for other players to take their turn, mm-hmm. and that stinks to me. So. Where is he going? <laughs> we need a recording sign somewhere upstairs going. Do not disturb geniuses at work. Anyway. Geniuses, geniuses at work. Barely. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I I don't like an elimination mechanic in any game I play because I don't want to sit and wait to, you know, for other players to finish. But it's just, yeah. I just, that's just me. So mm-hmm. what else did you think, like, in a co-op sense? It's just you, you wish it had co-op because you could work together to do all this stuff? or Yeah, I mean, I just keep thinking of the original Pac-Man and the Mrs. Pac-Man. Like, I thought it was so much fun. Did, wasn't there a co-op in the original Pac-Man? Um, there might have been multiplayer. I don't know about co-op. Yeah, There's so many versions of, co- um, of Pac-Man. I, <laughs> I couldn't tell you if any of them had co-op. Yeah, the, two, the, the, the original Pac-Man had a two-player. I think it Possibly. was a... Pac-Man yeah, and Mrs. So, Pac-Man, I think so it was. Can Dark Deception have it? That's That's, a th- that yeah. mind boggles me. Now, this game is still under development. It's still releasing DLCs, so whether or not it's mm-hmm. done with development is another story. I can't imagine, though, it's ever going to add co-op. Mm-hmm. I, 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 just, I don't see it happening, but maybe... Come on, mods. <laughs> modders. Ma- ex- yeah, come it. on, modders. Yeah, <laughs> developers might surprise us and do that. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, number four, um, I have a sound effect for number four as well. I swear it's just some guy eating a microphone. That's really weird. It's like a snore. That's labeled animal bark and growl. Where do you see that animal bark and growl? Thanks, YouTube royalty free sounds. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my number four games, uh, games that I wish I had co op um, Fallout 4. Hmm. Fallout 4 is like Skyrim in the sense that it's this open world adventure RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has a lot to it. Um, one of the reasons I enjoy playing it is for the base building aspect. Um, I know some people are going to complain about it, but um, it's something that I couldn't do in Fallout 3 that I can do in Fallout 4, and that's stick around an encampment, a base, whatever, a settlement, and build it up. I can I can put water spigots down. I can, I can plant crops. I can put market stalls down and earn money passively over time. Um, and I wish it had co-op because I wish I could have other people come out, do things with but- me. But they have Fallout 76, right? So isn't that kind of like it? Yeah, that, this is another example of where Fallout 76 didn't exist when Fallout 4 came out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're right. I mean, people that want a multiplayer Fallout could play Fallout 76, but I don't know how well it's doing, honestly. I don't, I don't own it. I don't play it. Mm-hmm. Um, just like Skyrim Online. Um, there, there's, there's that crowd that go, well, this is the best game ever. It's Fallout. It's, it has to be the best game ever. And then there's the crowd that goes... Um, this is, there, there's bugs everywhere, there's loot crates, this, this yep. is BS, um, you know, it, I, I, this is terrible, Bethesda, what are you doing to us? Um, <laughs> so, I don't know how well it is at this point in time. Mm. Um, did you play Fallout 4 at all? I played for like an hour, I think, and it was really fun, the hour that I played, but I didn't get very far into it because... I like I like the art styles of video games and I explore every single nook and cranny to see the art and to see all the details. So as soon as I got out of my bunker, got through that tutorial thing, I was just stuck there looking at all the 
trees and plants and everything. Nice. So. That's what I, I yeah. Liked it. I liked it though. <laughs> I liked the uh, exploration aspect of it. I really did. Um, mm -hmm. Like you never know. Like I, I like the fact that you can, like in Skyrim, you don't have to do the main quest. You could branch off and do, I, that's what I often did. I branched off and did my own thing. Oh, look, there's a town over there. Let's take the next three days real time and explore it. Um, every nook and cranny, loot everything possible. I'm a hoarder. So mm -hmm. I like doing that thing. Um, where I just, I have tons of crates and storage boxes and I organize everything the way I like. And yep. um, that's one thing I liked about Fallout 4 that I didn't like about Skyrim was that the UI in Skyrim was a bit, at least vanilla Skyrim was terrible. Trying to organize your inventory in Skyrim was very tedious. In this game, um, it's a bit more manageable. You can actually put crates down and organize things, whereas in Skyrim, you couldn't do that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I, I, yeah, I think this game would benefit from co-op just because one person can create a settlement and like, let's say they're in a building mood that day. They can stay, just stay home and build stuff, uh, grow a settlement. The other player goes out, gets stuff, brings it back and creates this huge mega base you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just I think that Fallout Four should have had a co op mode or go there's on adventuring. So many, there's so many adventure games like this mm -hmm. that have a co op mode. Mm -hmm. You know, and this would have benefited from that. I can think of Seven Days to Die that looks just like this mm -hmm. with a co op. I can think of um, State of Decay Two, like all these adventure games. Mm -hmm. Get with it. Get with it. There I... needs to be co op. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Just I mean. <laughs> That's true. Like you said, that's, I think that's true of any any open world RPG like this. Skyrim, mm -hmm. Fallout 4, any other one. Just because um, there's... When you've got this huge open world to explore and so many different things to do, it just makes sense to be able to assign those tasks to different friends, people, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that way you can work together. Uh, and a lot of successful open world RPGs have done that. Um, like, it's not on this list, but Dragon Age by Electronic Arts was a semi-open world RPG, and it was really good, and I wish, you know, you could have a friend help you with that. At least the original, mm -hmm. anyway. So, um, yeah, that was my number four, and uh, let me go ahead and, what was your number four? My number four was Autonauts. Autonauts. Um, it's not a game I've played very often. What is that all about? Oh, I love Autonauts. It's like a very simplified version of Factorio where you can just build up a town and um, you program robots in, in a logistical manner. But it's so simple to do it. They made it so simple for you to actually learn about programming and using the logistics and, you know, controlling robots to build your town. Mm -hmm. And it's I, I say factorial because um, it, there's so much chaining going on, but it's it's a cutesy version. It's not kind of nothing at all like factorial, <laughs> but it's just so cutesy. And I, I don't know. I just I just love that game so much. I'm so addicted to it. How do you think the co-op would work in a game like this? Oh, man, um, you can have like, I don't know, uh, robots yourself and your partner can have robots themselves and you know, you stick your two robots together and you make them do things and, mm -hmm. I don't know, building up a colony, like, between the both of you, I think would be fun. Mm -hmm. Like, if you need some wood, be like, hey, buddy, go go out and get me some wood, please. Okay, thanks. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> I don't know. Would we oh, each have God. our own encampments? Like in, say, in, in, for example, Stone Hearth or Northgard, mm -hmm. where we have our own encampments. In this game, would we have our own encampments? Like, I have my own set of robots, you have your own set of robots, and See, I would I program know. mine to collect wood, and you can re and program yours to take that wood and apply it to some machines that you might have already. You know what I mean? Or I don't know if I would like that, because in Stonehearth, while well, Stonehearth is really, really fun, especially with the co-op mechanic, I don't like that we have different towns too much. I wish it was cooperative in a true sense, where... Like, you guys can build a town together, you know, not nothing, like, too separated. Like, with this game, Autonauts, I think it would be really cool if um, everyone's robots were shared. And, um, you know, you just have to actually communicate amongst yourselves 
and say, okay, listen, I'm gonna control this robot. If you need, if you need him, or if you uh, need to change him, just let me know, and I'll give you the go ahead, or vice versa. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that makes total sense. Um, I I have a hard time with games like that co-op because a lot of the times I'm very possessive of my. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm building a factory, I'm it's yeah. like it's my baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want anyone touching it. So typically I have one playthrough for single player, one playthrough for co-op to fix that problem. Yeah. Um, so I, I playing co-op in a game like that is difficult for me because I'm reliant on other people mm-hmm. and uh, I have trust issues, A. And B, mm-hmm. um, if I have a particular mindset, like an OCD mindset, someone else can go mess with that freely. And, mm-hmm. and then I'm going, mm, what do I do now? I get all freaked out. You know, it's just, it's just a personality quirk. You know what I mean? So you hate don't starve together because of that. <laughs> I don't hate it. Mm. It bothers me that people could, I mean, I don't know. Like, let's say I, I, I enjoy it when other people play. Like Bessa, for example, one of our uh, Twitch subscribers, uh, he joined us one time and he knew more about the game and was building it up and doing very well. And I'm sitting there feeling useless and no, like, well, not useless, but more like, well, it's not my baby anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it's, even though it's my playthrough, yeah. I feel like someone else is carrying me. And like in Heroes of Hammer Watch, I don't want to be carried. You I, hate I, being carried. I, I, I want, I want to beat a game and say, I did it because mm-hmm. I figured it out. I did it. Whereas if someone carries me, I feel like I'm cheating. But it's but it's like a learning experience. So that way, when you do go into it solo, you have a better handle on it, and you can actually get really far. No, mm-hmm. no, I I agree. <laughs> Part of that is a, a neurotic thing with me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that so that's that's a personal quirk. Okay, Stalin. Yes. <laughs> Dictator. Raw, raw, Rasputin. Yep. Got it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding uh, I it. understand. <laughs> so, uh. What are you drinking? Is that professional? Excuse me. It was just a drink. Should I have muted myself? Sorry. Are you going to be busting out any food? You better not be busting out any food. That's all I got to say. No, no, no food. No food this time. No food forever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Not at all. What is this? Nothing. What is this? Put it back. Put it back. It's it's put back. I'm sorry. What what was it? (laughs) What is it? Show me! I'm shaming you, what is it? Oh, I s- oh, alright, alright. I- I can accept- I can accept that. Just because- Affirmative. It is a good- a good snack. Sorry! Sorry! I- I had- I have Oreos on me, I can't help it. Affirmative. It's good. Oreos are good, I- it's- it's allowable. You get a pass. Oh god. Oh my god. All right. All right. Um, okay. So what do we want? Number three? Yes, yes. Number three. All right. I have a sound effect for that. Ew. Number three. <laughs> Why would you do this? I, what do you mean? I, it's number three. Can't you tell by the sound effect that it's number three? Sounds like Sarah. Drinking. That's what, dog drinking close up. Oh, God, so gross. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right, number three. Number three. It? Well, we actually came up with the same answer for this one. Oh, Slime yeah. Rancher. Slime Rancher. Mm-hmm. So Slime Rancher is a cool game. Um, <laughs> well, it's a cool game. You describe it for me, and I'll tell you if you're right or not. All right. So Slime Rancher is where you roll dice. And you roll dice. Incorrect. And yep, and you put Pokemon. Incorrect. The the number amount. Incorrect. The number of Pokemon in that cage. Negative. (laughs) Go on. (laughs) Your sound effects are killing me. No, no. It's just, it's just um a game where you take slime monsters and you put them into cages. Like the monster that you are, and Affirmative. you feed them, and you farm them, and you sell what they poop. That and... is well. If you put it that way, I mean, like let's put <laughs> let's put defenseless slimes in cages, and then sell their poop. 
Yeah. That's like, I can understand where someone, you know, some sort of animal activist group would be like, this is unacceptable. What are you doing? But, you know, it's a video game. It's They're slime. Real. They're not real. It's fantasy. <laughs> so, like, I, I actually really enjoy this. Um, mm-hmm. I just, Slime Rancher, is. I, I love how smooth it is. I love the graphics. I love the art style. I love the uh, economics of it where you find different slime types and you can even upgrade the cages. Like, this slime type needs uh, some kind of special sunscreen so that they can they can survive in in the cage because they're sensitive to sunlight. Another slime needs a water pool, um, so you have to upgrade that. Um, some of the farm plots you can designate. Oh, this is going to grow vegetables. This one's going to grow fruit because this slime over here needs this particular food in order to survive. So I love I love that, and I love the exploration. I I don't like the uh, the map. Um, cause there's no way to really track your progress on that map or where you are for that matter. Like if there's you have no waypoints, no pings, right. And if you hover your mouse over a zone, it doesn't go five out of 10 mother slimes found or like it, it doesn't track your progress as you're discovering things. So if you play this yeah. game for a very long time and then stop. And then you come back to it later. You have no idea what you found so far. You just have to f- go through everything again and try and find, oh, I found this. Oh, I found... But there's no way to look at the map overall and go, oh, I found... This is what I've done so far. This is what I've left to do. Um, there's a way to loosely kind of track, hmm. which is by going to your uh, achievements. There's an escape and then settings and then go into achievements. You can kind of see what you did, hmm. but... Yeah, there needs to be a way better tracking system. And I think that's where co-op comes in. I think you can have, like, friends to remind you or something. Or, like, they can go travel and be like, hey, I'm right over here. Um, This is where you caught these gold things, right? And maybe they'll help you remember or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. (laughs) And and you, as for a co-op game, like, Mm -hmm. one person could stay home and, like, there's a science area. So one player can, like, you know, take all of the income that you're getting uh, mm-hmm. Like, one person can go out, get plort, catch slimes, be the slime hunter, come back. Plort and... is the poop, by the plort way. Plort is the poop, yes. <laughs> um, and instead of selling that poop, you can actually deposit it into the science machine and, and get other machinery. And then put, like, you can mine various zones to get other resources. So there's there's yeah. so much you can do in this game. It's cool. Uh, one person can go out and hunt. The other person can stay home and build these these farms, manage, uh, constantly get the plort from the cages, be it like a zookeeper kind of thing. Yeah. So I, as I, I'm just surprised that this game isn't co-op or multiplayer. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would have been awesome. I wish too that there was more, um, more cages, like more storage for your, for your uh, little creatures. Because I wanted one of everything, of every type, of every color, mm-hmm. and I can't really do that. But yeah, co-op would just like be super, super awesome. Agreed. <laughs> no, I make agree. You forget about the crap that's in the game already. Mm-hmm. No. I I would agree with that. Okay, so we're on number two. Mm-hmm. I have a sound effect for that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. What is that? It says dog growling. That's like someone that's a snarl. On... Yeah, it's, so, it's someone gnawing on a microphone. That's what that is. I'm pretty it, sure. It, it feels like there's a guy too close trying to gnaw at me or something. <laughs> <laughs> or or um, Igor from uh, Frankenstein or something. Yes, master. That's what... <laughs> That's what... Anyway, number two. Um, number two sound effect. That was my number two sound effect. It's, you can tell. The Long Dark. That w- my number two, The Long Dark. I picked this one because I like survival games, and this is the kind of game that proves that you don't need cutting-edge graphics, like realistic graphics, to be a pretty game. Like, take Call of Duty. The latest Call of Duty usually is always, like, realistic models. Um, you can see the little dimples on people's skins, the, the character's skins, the pores on their face. <laughs> Uh, it's it's disgusting. Like I bet if you zoomed in close enough, you could see the DNA mm-hmm. molecules. Uh, that's how that's how detailed the Call of Duty games are. This is a game where it's not 
like that, but it's still very gorgeous and pretty to look at. And this is a survival game where, you know, it's post-apocalyptic, but there's no zombies. You're fighting against the cold weather. So um, I just, I, I love that setting where you're fighting against nature and not some zombie. Like there's billions of zombie games out there now. So having yeah. a co-op game where you and a partner can explore together, survive together, it just makes sense. Um, there's so many games that are, you know, where you can survive already. A lot of survival games are multiplayer co-op. Uh, Don't Starve, as you already mentioned, for example, is a survival game of sorts. It's just top down. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense to have a game where one person goes out and hunts, the other person gets resources, collects sticks off the ground. Maybe one person goes out to this building and explores it, or this person goes fishing. I don't know. Like I just I I I'm shocked that this game doesn't have co op or any form of multiplayer. I think it needed it. Yeah, um, this is a great pick. Um, now, have you played Green Hell or or um, Eco? So do those have co-op? Because this reminds me, Long Dark reminds me a lot of those two games. Eco, survival Eco is the game where, isn't that a meteor is about to hit the planet yeah. every 28 days or something? That has multiplayer. In fact, it's okay. encouraged that you play multiplayer because of the grinding involved in that game. Mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't played it extensively. I covered it in one video and that was it. And that was okay. years ago. Green Hell also has multiplayer, I think. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. But Green Hell is that uh, Amazon rainforest survival game where mm-hmm. leeches can get under your sk- or w- There's, like, worms that can get into your skin and snake bites can kill you. You go crazy, paranoia. Um, yeah. It's a tough game. You eat the wrong bear, you go crazy. Um, yeah, so that reminds me a lot of The Long Dark because all the... Uh the sicknesses and the stuff that you can have you have to be kind of specific in healing them kind of yeah it's so. it's a learning it's it's a game where you either need a wiki to tell you what beats what mm-hmm. uh, in nature or you have to learn through experience and be like okay i died because of this wrong plant yeah. should not have eaten that plant or i shouldn't have drank that water until i cooked it you know just various things or or i can put this thing on the ground and collect water this way or I can hit this tree for a coconut. Um, in this game, it's like... Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that my character is, like, made of uh, fiberglass. <laughs> paper. It, paper, yeah. Basically, like, I, I'm walking along. I, I just... I hop off of a rock. Just a little hop. Oh, I broke my body. It, yeah. Like, or Or I took a step. Oh, my leg's broken. You dip your toe in, like, ice-cold water. Oh, I'm dying of hypothermia. <laughs> like, it's just, like, my character is so flimsy in this, like... The fall damage in this is ridiculous. <laughs> I should be able to h- jump, hop down off of a rock and, and not sprain my ankle in the process, mm-hmm. in my opinion. It's just, it's silly how sensitive this guy is. Or, I mean, maybe it's the cold. Maybe it does <laughs> something to you. I don't know, but. The survival aspect is just so great. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And having a co-op would have just like enhanced this game, I think. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you you've played this ex- extensively then? Yeah, I um I didn't beat the campaign yet, but um I'm definitely working on it. I got pretty far into it and I just I love this game so much. It it makes you feel like you're in a forest even though like I love the graphics for this game. It's not realistic, but I I think it's like realistic enough. I'm having a hard honest. time understanding cuz <laughs> we've had this discussion in the past. Where yeah. you're always the game, this the graphics on this are terrible, or the graphics are like we every time I see you look at a retro game, you're always complaining about it. This and then game you, doesn't look like Minecraft, so it's fine. But Stardew Valley, though, are you like Terraria, I, Stardew Valley? I did not like Stardew Valley because of the pixels, but then the more I played it, um, the more I can see. The more I can see how fluid it was, and the gameplay was great. There was a lot of content in it. Terraria was different because the pixels were a bit too much for me. And Terraria is a hard one for me to get into. Shut up, Wesley. Oh my god. It's a hard game for me to get into. Shut up, Wesley. (laughs) Incorrect. 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 How many shut up Wesleys do you have? Your opinion is incorrect, just so you know. Incorrect. You're Listen, saying something about Terraria? Terraria is an okay Shut game. up, Wesley. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it 
listen, Wesley got it right, okay? It's Shut, up, Wesley. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. You're gonna create your own soundboard of Shut Up, Wesley. It's your own I, voice. I need to find every every member of the cast that says Shut Up, Wesley on it. Oh, God. Anyway, like, you, you were saying, I'm sorry. I, I rudely interrupted you. <laughs> With Picard, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But... I like the long dark. It doesn't look like Terraria or Minecraft or Pixly. Um, I think it looks fine. Mm -hmm. The the gameplay just makes everything pretty great because it really makes it feel as if you're in a forest all alone trying to survive. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Okay. No, that's <laughs> and I think a co-op aspect would totally work here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So what was your number two? What was my number two? Oh, it was uh, Summer in Mara. <laughs> You've played this more than I have probably at this point. Um, yeah. Um, I actually rage quit it. I rage uninstalled it. Really? After, after so many hours, I did uh, rage uninstall because um, I actually came into a game-breaking bug that I did not like. But before it, I loved this game. This game is so great. It's basically Stardew Valley, but looking better, looking a lot better. <laughs> did you like the protagonist, the little girl, better than, say, you know, I mean, did, did, did you like the cutesy nature? It reminded me of like a Lilo and Stitch kind of thing. Yeah, I liked it. I liked the theme. I liked the islands, the island hopping. I liked the characters. All the characters were hilarious. It reminds me of um, a Star Trek uh, season because they're all different species it's really weird like when you go into town uh, all the species are so different you mean more like the star wars cantina where you're walking into the star yeah. wars bar and there's a different same alien thing. in every seat yeah same thing star okay. wars star trek it's fine incorrect <laughs> incorrect oh, i was gonna negative I was gonna spam it negative <laughs> negative I'm it. oh my god no you but... cannot use that <laughs> No, Star Trek, Star Wars, they are not the same. Listen, Star Trek, Star Wars, Summer, and Mara. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were saying... If you had, like, a brother and sister in Summer and Mara, I think it would have been really cute and a, a really neat co-op adventure. Okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments about... Now, what, what about it in co-op? Like, what would you do co-op-wise with this game? Same, I don't know, same thing in Stardew Valley. You go to town, you sell things, you farm things, you mine things, you, you know, <laughs> you do quests, adventures. Mm -hmm. It's just an open world. Okay. Um, building up, making money, and trying to get quests done type All of right. game. I can get behind that. Pretty I mean, uh, yeah, if it's like Stardew... I mean, it's like it seems like it was like Stardew Valley, but... Mm -hmm. um, I didn't play it for very long because there are other games of that type that I would rather play. There are. Um, I liked how fluid it was and um, the island hopping is cool. I recommend you keep trying until you get to that game breaking bug. <laughs> I'm not going to play. <laughs> you might like it up until that point, but you might like it. Incorrect. <laughs> I'm not going to play a game for hours only for me never to be able to progress because of a game-breaking bug. It's just... No. You'll still enjoy it, even if you can't progress anymore. Right? Incorrect. Incorrect. How many games have you do you have in your list that are unfinished? Destruct sequence completed and engaged. You don't even have to conversate anymore. Please restate a single question. <laughs> oh this is easier for me. I think we communicate a lot better this way. Wow. Direction unclear. Please repeat request. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. All right. What are we on? Number one? Uh, did you do your number two? I did. Oh, I did not. Uh, no, I'm on. Yeah, I did my number two. I'm on number one now. Oh, what was your number two? I don't even remember. I don't remember either. I closed <laughs> the tab. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, that's fine. All right. No, no, I have it. It was The Long Dark. That was number... Oh, yeah, it was, huh? 
gosh. Get with the program here. What are you I'm doing sorry. to me? You're messing up my podcast. How dare you? I haven't, I haven't had an Oreo yet. Red alert. All crew to battle stations. Red alert. All crew to battle stations. Sorry, Picard. All right, what's your number one? Number one. I got to find a really good sound effect for this one. Ready? Oh, no. Why? Why do you have these weird sound effects? Again, for YouTube. It's a, a YouTube YouTube royalty for... Because I couldn't find... Like, I wanted to do uh, Johnny Five is Alive from Short Circuit. Number five is alive. Or, you know, have you ever seen Short Circuit? No. Oh my god. Uh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Destruction sequence completed and engaged. <laughs> this is DGA Ghetto Podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Affirmative. All right. Number one. At least my number one. Okay. <laughs> Subnautica. Oh, that's a good one. Subnautica is another open world, uh, but it's more crafting oriented than anything else um, Mm -hmm. and exploration oriented. Um, There's not a whole lot of games that are underwater exploration, and this one does it so well. Uh, Like, everything looks so cool. Um, I like that you can build subs. You can build an underwater base. Um, There's so many things to harvest and to loot and to, to create. Um, and it doesn't make sense for it to be a single player experience only. I, like I can understand why some people might want to keep it single player, mm-hmm. but there's no reason that you couldn't have a friend or two help you out. I mean, this is another like Skyrim and Fallout. This is an open world situation where there's threats, there's things to craft, there's things to collect, and um, having more friends to help you do that. Um, you know, there might be some in- instances where you know doing a quest might be tough because it might. I don't know. Because you're kind of locked when you're doing your quests. You have to watch this creature talk to you or whatever. Um, but I'm sure that can be programmed around in some way. But it, it doesn't make sense why this game is single player only. Um, it just It's too good not to have co-op. You've played yeah, this. Um, I agree. Um, what would you do in co-op? I mean, would uh, you... I would send you out in the field because... As, I'm as, typ- too- as typical... I'm way too afraid of, like, the deep ocean. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to gather stuff, you know, where our little uh, drop pod is. You can mm. go out with the whales and the creepy creepy crawlies. I'll stay here and collect coral. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll build the base. How about that? Okay. You build the base. You can, build the archi- you can be the architect, and I would go out and collect things. The loot. The loot. The hoarder. The hoarder, Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, like I, like I said, I don't know what else to say about this. I've, I've, I've sort of beat the dead horse at this point. Like, between Fallout 4 and Skyrim, now Subnautica, open world, why not? You, know? you have a complete um, walkthrough of this, don't you? Not and complete, you're... but I have covered it extensively. And I did uh, show the ending on camera. It was a yeah, stream. You, you beat the game, right? Yeah, I did beat the game. Okay. I didn't show every little bit getting there, but I did mm-hmm. beat the game... Um, it was, it was a fun adventure, like just the building the base and, um, getting to a point where like I could walk in and, you know, just collect water and uh, like I was making my own water at at some point and growing food. And Mm -hmm. like at that point, like I felt like I was really accomplishing something in this game and to have, have a friend help me with that would be awesome. I just had a great idea. What if you could have a family in here? <gasps> like, yeah. Sacrifice you your kids like a... to the to the subnautica no, gods. Like if you what? Found a mermaid and you married her, and and the second player was like the mermaid, and you can have like little kids in your base, Incorrect. and you and you could say hi Shut to up, them Wesley. in your base. <laughs> I think Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> what are you talking about? A mermaid family in subnautica. This is this is getting into like Reddit, uh, no, like if a second player Reddit um, folk- folklore mer- territory, I think, or whatever. Oh no, you the second player can choose, like first and second player can choose what race they want to be, you know, and then they can explore, build the base, and then like have a family in the base. Oh, I think that'd be so cool. <laughs> no, you don't like that. Uh, uh, Incorrect. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like 
like it. I think it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> please restate a single question. <laughs> like, if you're stranded, right, in a huge water world, and you have no place to go, you have to... The, the only thing you can do is start a family. <laughs> In, a, in the water. Sure. Evolution. We'll go with that. Yeah, evolution. We'll, we'll yeah, evolution with, with a mermaid. And, and, um, mm. Negative. <laughs> what is she saying? Negative. Oh, okay. I had no idea. Don't be you're... dissing the Enterprise computer. Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> anyway. What are we on? Number one? Yeah. You're number one. All right. Uh, yeah. What was your number one? Mine was My Time at Portia. My Time at Portia. Another Stardew Valley-esque kind of game, right? It's weird. Like, I'm I'm noticing a pattern here. Like, I like the Stardew Valley-esque, cutesy type of games that I wish were co-op. And you have, like, the whole open world, um, long darkish Skyrim, Fallout 4, you know, type of games that you wish were co-op. I think it's a pretty cool... Um, uh, uh, di- what is it? Diverse, diverse thing. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you like about my time at Porsche? It's like Stardew Valley. <laughs> is that is that is that what this is? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's like a third person uh, Stardew Valley that is not pixelated. So, so, there's... so like Stardew Valley, you would have one player do the farming and and do the animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, one person maybe collects wood or stone, goes into the mines, gets resources yep. that way. The, the thing about this game is that the time, like, there's what, what's cool about this game is that there is no, like, time limit, so to speak. Like, you can beat mm-hmm. the game as you want to. But yeah. um, the days progress fairly quickly, and it's it's difficult because you only have so much energy. It feels like you've got this Facebook-esque energy system where um, yeah. once you run out of energy, that's it, unless you eat food. You know what yeah. I mean? So having a co-op would make sense. Mm-hmm. So you can get think, more done. I think it would be uh, really fun. Also, one thing I wanted to note, um, uh, I should have mentioned this before, but in the Subnautica thing, right? Okay. There is an actual mod for Subnautica for multiplayer. There's a mod, but it, it's not, yes. is it official or? It's not official, but um, a lot of people do use it and it works. And I think we should definitely try it out one day. Mm. <laughs> But it actually works. All you do is just go into the files and you edit a few things, add that file, and that's it. Cool. It's pretty cool. But yeah, anyways, back to my time at Porsche. Mm -hmm. This would be a great uh, co-op game, I think. It's just like Stardew Valley. If Stardew Valley did wonders with the multiplayer aspect, I think this would have done wonders too. Look at Farm Together. Farm Together has a huge following Mm -hmm. where you can jump in and out. And Farmville... Uh, yep. Zynga's baby was, um, yeah. I know, um, was I doing know. multiplayer farming long before games like this. So yeah. why we couldn't have a co? I mean, I'm sure part of it is budgeting. Developers don't have the budget to include a cooperative mode because there's more programming and more stuff that goes into making a co-op slash multiplayer. There's servers. There's more maintenance. There is. So I can understand why certain developers can't. But mm-hmm. again, Bethesda, for example, is uh, like a considered a quote unquote triple A company. So mm-hmm. they should have had the funds to do a co-op uh, mm-hmm. or Fallout 4. They should have had, uh, you know, they should or yeah, they should have had funds to do uh, like the Fallout 4 multiplayer from right out of the gate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So why? Now, I don't know the uh, ex- I don't know to what extent the developers behind this game, how successful they are, how big they are. I'm imagining mm-hmm. that they're more indie than, say, Bethesda. Um, mm-hmm. But they are making other games. Um, they recently, I think, are working on one where it's a puzzly. You're this little girl. I covered it. I don't remember the name of it, but you're walking around doing puzzles and stuff. It, it looked OK. Yeah. Um, but it seemed again very indie-ish. Uh, not not to say that indie is a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's it's a, you know, most indie developers don't have that huge of a budget. So I can see yeah. why co-op may not have been a thing here. Mm-hmm. But I just I, it's it's a wishful thinking type it, of thing. At it this is. Point. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That was our top five games that we wish had co-op. Um, if you have any suggestions on entries for your, you know, if you guys are watching this and you're like, you know what, you guys miss this one or you guys miss this one or, you know, I think this one should have co-op, feel free to leave uh, comments in the comment section and uh, tell us what you think there. 
All right. So um, we did have some, I want to say, honorable mentions. Um, mm -hmm. Things that we probably would have included in this list but didn't because either they didn't fit <laughs> or maybe it was like a maybe kind of situation. Mine were more of a maybe kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, they were initially on my list, but then I found other games that would work better on that list. So um, what were your maybes? I didn't have any maybes. I had a top uh, 20 list. It, they just didn't fit. So I had to uh, decrease it to top five. You have um, to bring a sound effect. Well, that. yeah. <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> All right. So what? just list them all. Like, what, what were some of the ones that you wanted to add to the list but couldn't? Grifflands. Grifflands. That the deck builder? Yes. Okay. I think it'd be so fantastic as a co op game, no? As a like a like a like a I don't know, like someone on your team picking cards and you know, you guys trying to beat down the other party. <laughs> Well, my issue with that is in a deck builder, typically, if, if there are, you can, one player can control multiple decks of cards. Mm -hmm. um, the recent games I've been playing had uh, like three characters and each one had its own deck and you controlled each one in combat. So like having a friend do it, I mean, I, I can see the, I can see the draw there. Like you could, you know, one player could, you know, play these cards. You can coordinate with your friends and be like, I'm going to play this card. You can play this card. I can see yeah. that because there are a lot of tabletop deck builders. Um, some are like the Marvel. There's a Marvel uh, cooperative deck builder. There's a DC cooperative deck builder. Uh, mm -hmm. Star Trek, the next generation has a Borg co-op mode where mm -hmm. both all the players are building a deck against the Borg. So yeah. I can, I can see that work. it does. It's just in a digital format. Like it, I don't know. Like, to me, I would rather just control the decks myself because I'm OCD. Yeah. But I can see where you would think, you know. What was yours? I'm uh, curious. Well, I had three. I had okay. Ultimate General Civil War. Okay. Um, I wish there was a multiplayer mode where we can do co-op or just versus. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, you know what? Having, again, a friend in battle with me where I couldn't control them, like, we would have to really coordinate in that game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would I would like the idea of a, a co-op mode in that game. Mm -hmm. They Are Billions is another one. It's like a, a d base defense RTS where, you know, maybe two bases and each player can help each other out, build military things. Or maybe each pl they all control one base and yeah. one player focuses on military expansion, looking around. The other player builds up the base. I was playing mm -hmm. around with that idea, but then like certain games, I don't know, like I would prefer to play single player as opposed to co-op. Like mm -hmm. Oxygen Not Included is a underground survival game where you control these these people, whatever they're called. And yeah. I don't know if I would like too too many like too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. Yeah. There are some games that would actually be hurt by that concept. Too many cooks in the kitchen. I and, I like the the option at least you know to yeah. give you that option. I understand. And then Assassin's Creed Odyssey was my last one. Um, I mm -hmm. like that open world. It's another open world RPG. Um, it's it's not as it's not as like it's not a game where you would go out and farm mine uh, like uh, go or you know fa farm ore or chop down mm -hmm. trees for wood. It's not like that. But um, I would love to be able to sneak around with someone. Okay, you take this guard out. I'll take this guard out. Um, mm -hmm. I've played Assassin's Creed extensively and I uh, Odyssey anyway. And I really enjoyed it. And having another player there to help me out out of a pinch would be fun. But I, the other five games I mentioned in the top five, I think, would have benefited more from co-op than the three that I just mentioned. Yeah. Ultimate General Civil War, They Are Billions, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Did you have other ones besides that? Yeah, I did. I did. I had House Flipper. <laughs> House, how would that be a co-op? Because, like, Viscera Cleanup Detail is a co-op. So why can't house flipper be a co-op? Why can't multiple people clean a house? You know, make mm. a house. <laughs> no, that makes sense. No, I understand. And Rimworld, I think Rimworld would have been fun as co-op. How would that? Would each player have their own settlement, or would you control the same settlement? Either way, I think I think either way works. To be honest, like very stone hearthy esque. Mm. See, that's what I mean. Like too many cooks. I don't want. Really? I wouldn't want. <laughs> if in Rimworld you start with three survivors, right? Yeah. Typically. You could, there are other mm -hmm. modes. But I'm just saying, typically you start with three survivors. I don't want 
one person clicking on like I'm trying to do something with someone. I want you mm-hmm. to go farm this or or pick up this stuff, and then you the other player takes direct control of them and does something else with them. Like, well, yeah, in that case, it would be better to have like a stone hearthy type separate of... settlement, and then you yeah. work together on the same. Yeah, exactly. Hat. That's what I would prefer over control of the same. The more again, too many cook syndrome. Yeah, uh, is, I'm just gonna keep using that. <laughs> and uh, nine one one or one twelve operator, I okay. think would have been fun. That's cool. That is a pretty hectic game. Uh, being mm-hmm. able to have another pair of eyes. Okay, you watch that part of the map. If there are any emergencies, uh, assign units to it. Um, uh, oh, I need a fire truck. Can you send me one that's up there? Or you know, I, I can kind of see that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Tharsis, that dice. The rolling. dice rolling game. The okay. The it's dice seen... placement, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. Niche. Niche. The, yeah. That, um, what was it? The, um, the breeding, uh, um, turn-based creature game. You don't like that one? I like that it. It's Niche. This is the sound effect from Niche. Isn't it? Uh, <laughs> that's you not... must have hated it. That's from Niche, isn't it? That's a direct sound effect from the game, isn't it? Is it? I don't that's know. That's when they breed. Yeah. Anyway. And um, Licked and Battle Mage was my last one. I have never played that one. That is a fun game. That reminds that... me of the... I mean, I've seen Screenshot. It reminds me of the magic from Skyrim. Where, you know, you're controlling magic spells. Mm-hmm. That's what it reminds me of, but go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of like that... Um, it's very, very linear. I think a co-op um, Licked and Battle Mage would have been fun. Mm-hmm. You okay. can play it on my family shared one day. One day. <laughs> when I get around to being able to have time to myself. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, yeah, top five honorable mentions. Like I said, um, if you have any comments for yourselves, uh, put them in the comments section. Okay, so now that we're done with the top five, let's get into new releases. Now, yes, there's going to be more new releases than what I'm mentioning here, but these are the main ones that stuck out to me. Um, So the Battle of Polytopia is a game that just released. It's 33% off right now, and I think the price was around $10.04. The Battle of Polytopia, if I remember correctly, was a mobile game, or at least just it was called Polytopia. It was like a pixelated civilization game where you start off small and then you expand across the map with military units. And uh, it's, it was turn-based, though. So you actually had to end your turn and like in civilization. It was a really cool game. Um, I requested a copy of the Battle of Polytopia. Don't know if I'll get it, but um, that just released. Also, Littlewood. It looked like a relaxing RPG slash Stardew Valley clone, kind of, sort of. Um, so on my wish list. <laughs> Littlewood? Yeah. Yeah, it's 15 bucks, roughly. No uh, sale. There's no launch sale that I can see. So, uh, yeah, if, if uh, you like Stardew Valley and this type of game appeals to you, then maybe Littlewood might be something to look into. Uh, mm-hmm. Grounded recently released. Um, I think that's still under development. And it's like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, survival game. It, it, it plays like The Forest Kind of, sort of, where you're putting down walls, uh, and collecting resources like the logs, but instead you're you're picking up straw and uh, grass, and 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 then you're putting that down as your walls. Uh, whereas in the forest, you're taking huge logs and you're putting down walls. Here, it's like you're putting down grass. Um, I've never played it. I'm I requested a copy, and Microsoft or whoever got back to me and said they didn't. Oh, Obsidian. Obsidian got back to me and said they didn't have any more keys, so when this goes on sale, maybe I'll look into it, because I, I like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I would love the idea of, like, a spider, you know, I, I want to see, like, a life-size spider chasing me. That would be cool. No yeah, way. Idly's favorite monster, I know. Nope. That was 30 bucks, and I think it's still under development, uh, early access. And then lastly, Destroy All Humans. I recently covered that. It's a humorous action shooter up, uh, shoot em up. Uh, there's a spaceship you can control in certain scenes, and then there's an alien you can control. You can uh, uh, you can sort of hologram yourself into other pl- uh, other NPCs on the map and pretend to be them. Uh, it's it's more silly adult fun though. Uh, there's a lot of inappropriate things, so kids shouldn't be playing it. I did release a, a video on it recently, so go check that out. And that's also thirty bucks. So those are the four new releases that I looked up. There's more, like I said. Um, Getting into the sales part of it, uh, there's a ton of these. I'll try and get through these as quickly as I can. 
Um, on Steam, uh, Streets of Rogue is 30% off. It's $13.99. I'll just round it up to $14. Uh, Streets of Rogue is like this, um, you know, you, you choose one of many different character types and you're trying to complete objectives. It's like a roguelike of sorts. It's really fun. Uh, Legend of Keepers is 20% off. It's $16. Uh, Graveyard Keeper is 50% off. It's $10. Offworld Trading Company is 55% off. It's uh, $13.50, mm-hmm. roughly. Uh, Dead by Daylight, my son really loves that one. Six sixty percent off, seven bucks or, or eight bucks rather. Uh, Barrow Trauma, forty percent off at eighteen bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spore is seventy five percent off at five bucks. So you can pick it up for five bucks. It's fairly cheap. It's an older game, but it's it still holds up. I like mm-hmm. the space aspect personally. The the last era. Green Man Gaming. Um, I have a link to Green Man Gaming in the below description. If you buy any game, feel free to do it through my link. I'll get a small cut from that. Um, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Uh, I think it's the special edition. It's 50% off and it's 20 bucks. It makes it 20 bucks. Fallout 76 is 50% off. It's 20 bucks. Uh, Fallout 4 Game of the Year is 67% off at 20 bucks. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, the older Fallout game, which seems to be the definitive pick among a lot of Fallout players. Uh, 70% off, it's 6 bucks. Uh, so if you're looking into Fallout game, like an open world, maybe start with New Vegas. It's popular, uh, very well uh, renowned, and it's it's the cheapest out of all of them. Uh, mm-hmm. C&C Remastered, Command & Conquer Remastered, recently came out. Um, 20% off, it's 15 bucks. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is 50% off. It's 30 bucks. I don't own that one. It's a Star Wars game, but um, it's more like a Dark Souls game, and I don't like Dark Souls because I'm more casual. So I'm going to wait until that drops in price even more to pick it up. And it's a very linear experience. You beat it once, there's really very little replayability there. Uh, Sims 4 is 63% off at 15 bucks. However, the DLCs, I'm sure, are still... 15 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 10 bucks, 50, like it's $300 worth of DLCs that don't need to be there, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Humble Bundle, it's Assassin's Creed week, so there's a ton of Assassin's Creed games on sale. Um, just one of them, the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like the Ultimate Edition is 72% off, it's 30, $33.65. Um, that includes like a lot of stuff though. Um, you can just get the core game for a lot cheaper than that if you want to. But I would recommend Odyssey. I've played it, covered it. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I tried so hard to hit the mute button. Uh, you didn't get to it in time. I didn't. Oh, my God. You have to cut that out. Uh, nope. <laughs> oh, my Good God. Good job. That is so embarrassing. That's beautiful. That was beautiful. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Continue. Continue. Go on. There's a double fine, pay what you want, uh, and a Star Trek Adventures RPG book, pay what you want bundle. I got the Star Trek Adventures RPG, pay what you want. I don't know anything about RPGs. I've never GM'd or, you know, game mastered before, but I picked them up because Star Trek, and I'll read through them eventually. But the core book is several hundred pages long, so I'd have to look, yeah. So I will eventually get to that. I just don't know when, but I picked them all up for 15 bucks. There's a ton of books if you like RPGs and you like Star Trek and you don't have it yet, Humble Bundle has it. I also have a Humble Bundle link in the description that you can, uh, you know, buy things through. Anno 1800, 66% off, 21 bucks or so. Star Trek Bridge Crew and the Next Generation DLC package, uh, 53% off, 14 bucks or so. And then Far Cry 5 is 83% off, making it around 10 bucks. So, yeah, Far Cry 5 has a lot of content in it. So I would recommend checking that out as well. All right, community segment. So we thought about what to do with this. Um, Idly had a great idea. I often butcher Spanish, so she's going to come up with a sentence that I have to figure out every week. Not only do I have to recite it, but I have to try and figure out what it means. So it's going to be our weekly Spanish sentence of the week. And I have a sound effect for that. Yeah, yes. All, All right. right. <laughs> that was yeah. from an episode of Star Trek, for the record. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when Q loses his power and becomes human. I'm immortal again. I'm omnipotent again. Swell. <laughs> anyway, Spanish sentence of the week. 
I put it on the top of the screen there. All right, let's see if I can recite this. Um, <clears throat> El Tama de hoy son los cinco mejores juegos para un jugado que desarrollaron que foran cooperativos. Very good. Now you recite it. How am I supposed to say it? You said exactly like it. I would have. El yeah, tema de hoy son los cinco mejores juegos para un jugador que decidíamos que fueran co cooperativos. <laughs> I can't even say that word mm. myself. Bring the word. Or crew to battle sessions. <laughs> co cooperativos. Cooperativos. There you go. <laughs> good job. Very good. <laughs> I All can't right. even read English. Good. No, you did good. Um, <laughs> I I don't even know what it means, but. I'm going to come right out and say you did good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Translate it. I believe. Well, juegos is play. Thanks. Who God or is play again. <laughs> um, Deseramos is decimate. So let's let's take this one and co okay. cooperative. So el tama de hoy son. Hoy de uh, son los cinco. Okay. The son of five. There's a boy that is five years old. Uh, his name is El Tama. So uh, the son that is five years old, his name is El Tama. Um, he plays and decimates cooperative games. That's, that is, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Yes? So wait, say it again. Say the whole sentence in English. <laughs> El Tama, a son... <laughs> <laughs> who is five years old, plays uh, plays and decimates cooperatives okay. games. That's your final answer. That's my final answer. All right. That's right. It translates into today's topic is the top five single player games we wish were cooperative. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> but I like your translation much better. I, I think, think it makes sense, honestly. I, it does. It's it's perfect Spanish right there. <laughs> you win. You have a better translation. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Spanish sentence of the week. Awesome stuff. Very well done. I think that was a good first official Span uh, Spanish <laughs> sentence of the week. All right, so with that fun stuff out of the way, um, let's go ahead and talk about, well, Animal Talk. So Animal Talk is another segment we thought about doing. I don't know if it's going to be regular or not. Um, basically, it's a chance for everyone in the community to share pictures of their fuzzy friends. Um, for example, I've got a video here of the ferrets playing in the hallway. Um, <laughs> the one with the... The darker colored back and the feet, that's Sandy. Uh, the only male of the group is Augie. He's the fat one. He's the, mm -hmm. he's the large one. He's, he's like a polar bear. Uh, he's so lovable and, and squishy and mm, cuddly. Anyway, cuddly. Uh, <laughs> and then I think Sophie and Tara are down the hallway there. But the whole point I was trying to make was if you guys would like to possibly send in pictures of your own pets, um, you can send them to an email address that I created just for this podcast. It is DGA podcast at yahoo.com. Um, I'll put a, I'll put, I don't want to say a link, but I'll just write it out in the description of this video so that you can easily just copy and paste it into your two browser should you want to send pictures. But if you send pictures to me um, and they're, you know, on the up and up and they're not like inappropriate, I'll go ahead and feature them on the next podcast. So um, during the next animal talk, um, I'll feature some pets. But if you could, um, just make sure that you let me know what the breed is so that maybe I can come up with some quick wiki facts to go with your pictures. You know, if, if you've got a, a golden retriever, for example, let me know that that's what it is. Or primarily, a Heinz, if it's a Heinz 57, maybe just tell me like one or two of the breeds that's, that it might be made up of so I can, you know, either say it or possibly come up with some quick fun facts or something like that but yeah a funny story too yeah or like funny story I'll, I'll be happy to read that off too assuming it's you know family friendly and all that good stuff mm -hmm. so yeah dga podcast at yahoo.com and if i get a lot of pictures then i'll feature some of them and i'll make it a weekly thing 
Um, I'll feature maybe two or three pictures one week, and then the next week, two or three more pictures, and then I'll just keep running with it. So um, if I get a lot of pictures, then I'll just, I'll make this Animal Talk segment a regular thing. If I don't, then I'll just make it a one-time or maybe a -a once-a-month thing. We'll see. Um, Also, um, you may have noticed that I had a theme song coming into this. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to keep it. Um, I did email uh, Jake Kaufman, who was the... um, the original maker of that song. It was the Double Dragon theme song uh, for Double Dragon Neon. And the reason I chose it was because um, it was the first game I ever owned on the NES. I woke up one Easter morning and there was an NES on my desk in my room hooked up and it wasn't Mario Brothers, like (laughs) as was typical. Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, it was that dual cartridge thing. It was Double Dragon. Of all things. So Double Dragon was my first NES game. And I happened to like the theme song to Double Dragon. So I was like, you know, why not just, why not just do that? So um, if I have permission to use it, I'll go ahead and continue using it. If not, then I'll just choose something else. I I have yet to hear back from them. Um, It's a pay what you want soundtrack purchase. Meaning if you try and search for it online, the whole uh, Double Dragon Neon soundtrack. It's a pay what you want. The fact that he's giving it away for free or the option to give it away for free tells me that it's not going to be a problem, but you never know. So I, I have the email out there anyway. <laughs> um, also, uh, words on stream. I'd like to maybe set up some kind of game night with you folks. And I was thinking that uh, words on stream was a relatively safe and family friendly thing to do. I thought about Jackbox, but um, the last time I tried doing Jackbox with people... Um, at least in mass with people I didn't know. Uh, there were a couple that just ruined the experience because they were just vulgar and not appropriate. It wasn't very yeah. family friendly. So um, I think I think what I need to do then is start with something that's a bit more controlled. Uh, words are words on stream. I think would be a uh, safer thing to do. So um, I was thinking Friday. Let me look at my calendar. Eight seven uh, August seventh, two thousand twenty. This year, of course. Um, around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which, you know, I I don't know what that would be for you. Feel free to do the math. But um, I will be on my Discord at 7 p.m. August 7th, Eastern Standard Time. And um, I will put a link to my Discord in the description of this video. Typically, I only give that out to people that uh, support me on Patreon. But I'm going to go ahead and just open it up just for this particular event. And, um, yeah, if you want to join us, great. Um, and I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you guys. Um, Patreon stuff. Um, I already released a vlog of everyone that supported me for the month of August, but I was thinking about doing, stopping the vlog altogether. And once like, since I'm going to release this weekly, this podcast, I'm thinking every fourth podcast, like the beginning of every month, go ahead and list out the Patreon supporters here. That way I'm, I don't have to do the, the individual vlog anymore. It kills two birds with one stone. Um, the downside is it's just I may be getting more Twitch subscribers at some point. So I'm just going to say a general thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers right now. I do appreciate it. Like White Knight and Bessa have been there for a long time. I do appreciate it. Um, but I may not read off the Twitch subscriber names anymore. Um, but I will read off the Patreon ones because, you know... Um, you guys have been really supportive. Anyway, Patreon rewards for August. I'll just read your names, the amount that you contributed. Ratsies, for example, contributed $100 this month for a lifetime of $2,590. Bucks. Brian um, pledged $50 bucks for a lifetime of $150. Scotty R. pledged $30 for a lifetime of $690. Greg Howe pledged $10 for a lifetime of $372. Mindalot pledged $5 for a lifetime of 55 and Rip Alpha pledged a dollar for a lifetime of 40 So any amount is awesome. I thank you so much. Um, I'm not working right now. Um, I was laid off in October due to corporate restructuring. And then COVID hit, and it's like it's been a nightmare. So in medical mm-hmm. issues. So the fact that you guys are helping me out with my with my mortgage and everything else is really cool. So I do appreciate it. Um if you can't do a Patreon subscription, um, oh, I also give out free Steam keys uh, on my Patreon uh, stuff. So once a month, um, not only do I read off your names, but I also pick like the top three or four people that pledged and I send out Steam keys to them. 
Um, so uh, typically it's Ratsy's, Brian, Scotty, and Greg that are getting them. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And if you guys happen to support me on Patreon, who knows, maybe you'll get a key too. Um, but if you can't, because, you know, maybe you're, you're younger and you don't have money, which is understandable. Um, just feel free to share my content everywhere you can. I don't know all the internets. I don't know where you kids are hanging out nowadays. So if you share them to a Reddit, subreddit thing, which I'm not a part of, I don't know anything about Reddit. So if you share my content there or whatever, that would be great too. So even if you can't contribute financially, um, you can still contribute by sharing my content around and helping me grow and get more subscribers that way. So that's it. That is the DGA podcast for this month. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a regular weekly thing. I would like it to be. Hopefully it takes off and you guys enjoy what we're doing here. Um, Let us know how we did and any suggestions on what you'd like to see in the next podcast. Um, If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince and Ida Lee. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye guys. (laughs) 